Greetings, church family. Welcome to the Pastor's Show. It's the week after Easter. We've had a great week at First Baptist Church. What a great time it's been. I hope you were able to join us this past Sunday. The Lord is good. His love endures forever, and we've had a great time. And we've, we miss you if you're not here, and we love seeing you, and I hope that you're having a great time and a great week. So I'm here today with Mark. Uh, McClendon, Mark, how you doing today? How are things in the McClendon family? Yeah, we're doing well. We had a great Easter. What a great service we had here. We'll talk a little bit more about that, but it was such a great worship service. We got to be a part of both the summit and the celebration, and they both were just incredibly uh, well uh, organized and worshipful, and it was just so impactful. If you missed it, you can still go online and see it. So, you know, you can do that. Then afterwards, we got to go and have have lunch with several people um, at a home here in Nacogdoches, and it was just a blessing. And uh, I got to hide Easter eggs. That always makes me happy. And so um, that was super fun. So we've had a great, great weekend. What about you and Angela? How did y'all, how did y'all spend the rest of Easter? Well, we had a great time here at the church, of course. And then afterwards, we turned down so many wonderful, kind people at the church that wanted us wanted us to have them have us at their home for lunch. But we went, we drove up uh, uh, up to Kilgore, and we met our daughter and son-in-law and okay. grandkids, and spent some time with them. And we don't get to see them that often, and so that was a great time just to see them and enjoy a meal and some some playtime. And it was just a, a great time. So it was a good Easter. Yeah, in every that's way. awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, so we've got so much to celebrate. So many things have happened here at the church. Um, Mark, tell us what has happened. If, if somebody's been living under a rock the last week or so, tell us what's happened here at First Baptist Church since the last pastor show. Well, hey, let me first just talk about what we did all last week uh, working up to Easter from Palm Sunday all the way through. We had a great opportunity of reaching out to our community and reading God's Word publicly right there on, on the front steps of our church, right there out by the chapel. And we read 24-7 uh, from Sunday afternoon after church all the way through uh Friday noon, and it was really incredible. Uh, Meredith and I got to read a couple of times, uh, which was very fun. Um, and uh, we prayed that we would have passages that weren't awkward or that weren't um, weren't names we didn't know how to speak. And uh, God answered two of the three of our prayers. And so what a blessing that was. Um, but it was so fun to be a part of that. And you know, Tom, I know you were out there quite a bit. But it was amazing to see people that stopped by and just kind of sat and listened to the word. People that weren't even a part of our church just listening. And it was just encouraging all times of day that people were coming to do that. So I thought that was that was pretty awesome. Um, Indeed. So uh, that was such a great a great way to begin our Easter week. And then we had Easter services. And so, so many people want to know, you know, the nuts and bolts of that. Um, I, I think the most important thing is, is that uh, we had a ton of visitors here um, on campus. And so we need to uh, be reaching out and encouraging people to come back. Um, I'm so thankful that we did the texting thing in the church. Um, we did not get 100%. Um, from, uh, back from that, as you can imagine. Um, no judgment if you're sitting here watching the pastor's show and said you didn't do it. We are not looking at you. Um, but it does remind me that uh, there are a lot of people that we didn't know about that either have come back after a long um, hiatus from coming to church because of pandemic and then also just people that are visiting. And so while we had probably 40, I think 45 people that, that wrote that they were visitors, which was great, and we're reaching out to them this week. I've texted almost all of them today. Um, but uh, we had a ton of people here on campus. And so if you can hear my voice, I just encourage you to call people and invite them to come back to church this Sunday. We would love to see them. And please tell them to fill out a Connect card so that we know about their visit. Um, but everyone wants to know how many people were here. You know, they all, you know, what was the number, Mark? And so, Drum roll, um, please. We, right. So we had over a thousand people here in, in our four services, which was awesome. What a gift and a blessing. You know, uh, last year we, we barely hit just a little under 800 last year. And so uh, that's what a great, um, a great growth number, uh, 1,700 
1,074, not 700, 1,074 <laughs> people. And so that was so exciting to see that, just the buzz that was happening. My prayer is that um, is that we have uh, around 800 this coming Sunday. Would you pray okay. that God number prayer? That would be really hard to do, but wouldn't that be exciting for us to see about 800 people worshiping the Lord with us on April the 24th? Um, so those are the kind of the things that happened last week. But you know what? There's some things coming up just this week, and I know that you're just ready to talk about them, Tom. So what's going on? Well, I'm excited about this week. Uh, people have seen the announcement. They know that the singing men of East Texas are coming to our church. It's been a number of years. I don't know how long, but it's 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 been a number of years since they've been here. And uh, there's a good following um, of, of folks uh, that follow the singing men around East Texas. But, but what they may not realize, what our church may not realize is, Andre Simone is the director of that group, so he and Rana will be here Thursday night, and it's the uh, the first time that I that I'm aware of that they would have been back in the church since I've been here, and I'm excited that they're coming back. I've been working with Andre the last few weeks to make sure all the logistics are ready and everything is set up and good to go. But it's been so much fun singing in that group uh, with him and under his leadership. And, and I know he's excited to come back to First Baptist Nacogdoches and see everybody. I know everybody's going to want to see him too. But the group will uh, sing with, oh, I don't know, 50 or, or so uh, men and and uh, some instruments. It's just going to be a great time. If you've not heard the singing men, it's, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. We actually have uh, five other men besides myself that are right. from First Baptist Nacogdoches that sing in the group. There's Ashley Faulkner and Paul Cook and Ken Smith and Rick Roberts and John Shinrock. Uh, we uh, we enjoy being in that group singing every month somewhere in East Texas. And, and so it's going to be a great time. So everybody in our church needs to be here on Thursday night at 7 o'clock uh, for, uh, for that concert. And, and it'll be a great time of worship and singing and music and and so I can't wait for that. So um, so that's happening this week. And then Sunday, uh, are, I heard something. Are we doing Sunday school or something, Mark? What's happening yes, there? Yes. Yes, Sunday school is back. We're so excited about it. So uh, if you don't know uh, what Sunday school class you need to go to, please call the church. We'd love to talk with you and let you know your options that you have. We have several options for every, every age, and uh, we've got... Uh, different types of, of Sunday school classes, lecture-driven, discussion-driven. Uh, there's so many options. And we have a couple of new new classes that are starting. Um, Tom, I know you'll want to talk about that in just a minute, but uh, we have a lot of things going on with our Sunday school class for sure. Um, I know we've got, um, just coming up, um, uh, uh, the opportunity to do a fellowship. And so almost all of our classes are doing some kind of fellowship Sunday, either for lunch or for dinner or an afternoon thing. So be checking with your classes. And if if you don't know about that and you're visiting a class, then go to class and find out what you're, what you're going to go do. So that will be super fun. You know, Tom, I think you're starting a class, am I right, this Sunday? Tell us a little bit well, about that. Absolutely. In fact, if you were here Sunday, we had those green cards because we know that there are people in our church, a lot of visitors Sunday, as you said, Mark, a lot of folks here. And some of our folks aren't actively engaged in Sunday school and Bible study. See, small groups are so important. Uh, to the life of a church and to our spiritual development and, and just the fellowship that is part of our faith family. You mentioned 800 people this coming Sunday. That Wouldn't that be great? But that would also mean 800 in Sunday school. And That's so right. we've got room for them. Let's, let's fill up those rooms and do that. But this Sunday, uh, the pastor is relaunching his class so you can be a part of his class. Uh, the, uh, the summit uh, discovery uh, class that that Grant leads is going to keep going, and and they're building and relaunching what they're doing. Of course, the Hispanic class that Caleb does, but I'm starting one as well called the Celebration Discovery class. Crispin and Crystal Bradshaw um, are going to uh, partner with me in that endeavor, and we're going to meet on the third floor, kind of above where the above and behind the choir loft area on the organ side, and and uh, we've got a nice little space up there carved out for us to start a new class. So if you, uh, this class is not for anybody that's already in a Sunday school class. It's only for people who aren't engaged in one. And we're taking the approach that if we get together and things gel real well and we keep it together, that's a great thing. But it also could be 
one of those situations where this is a stepping stone class or a, a conduit class where we can help you get connected with another class that's already going. So come see us, and it's a good place to kind of start and get going with uh, with a faith family, kind of a, a micro congregation there, and we want to have you there. So uh, call me or text me if you want to uh, be a part of that or just show up. It's absolutely fine. Well, of course, we'll have the coffee and the donuts ready to go. Uh, can't do Sunday school without coffee and donuts, right? So uh, we're doing that. So I, um, in addition to that, so uh, is that enough for Sunday? Did you have anything you wanted to add there, Mark, for Sunday? No, you're 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 doing great. You're doing great. Okay. In, in addition so, to that, what else do you want to talk about? We've got. Uh, I'm going to take us now. I did a little interview with Caleb Castro. We have a tremendous event coming up on Saturday the April the 30th. So uh, let's let's talk to Caleb for just a moment and see what's happening there. Well, I'm here now with Caleb Castro, our Hispanic minister. And Caleb, I understand that you have this huge church-wide event that's coming up on April the 30th. And I want you to tell us all about it. What's happening in the Hispanic ministry on April the 30th? Absolutely. We're going to have a really, really fun field event. Uh, we have called it Dia del Niño Festival. And really it's just uh, uh, in, in, in memory of a uh, holiday that we have in Mexico called Dia del Niño. So every year, April 30th, children are celebrated. Uh, schools, they don't teach anything that day. It, they bring food, they bring clowns, they bring candy and all sorts of things. And Kids are just allowed to have fun. And really, uh, it began as a way for different kids from different classes to all be treated the same. So it was a way for all children to be treated the same. And so in in that mindset, I just thought, why don't we have just a fun-filled day for children where their parents can bring them and we can bring our church kids and our church can really be there and love on them and, and really enjoy just playing, the kids playing with other children and our parents getting to mingle with parents from the community. This really is uh, uh, not only an event for our church, but also an outreach event and how fun that we get to do that. Uh, we're going to have food. We're going to have uh, uh, bounce houses. We're going to have um, music. We're going to have games. I mean, anything you can think of, we're going to have it there. Think of it as a fall fest, uh, but just with a, with a little bit of Hispanic flair to it. I think it's going to be really fun. I encourage our church families to sign up, um, and, and we really just want to know how, how many people are coming so that we can have enough food for everybody and enough candy and things for everybody. But please sign up and be a part of this. This is a really, really great way that we can minister to the families, uh, Hispanic families in our community. They recognize this. They love this. They will come. And we can be, they're, they're coming to our own backyard. And what, how wonderful that is that they will be here and we can minister to them. We can love on them and, and gain an entrance into, and an opportunity to share with them the gospel. It's so ultimately, that's what we want to do. We want to share with them the gospel and bring them into our church family. That sounds fantastic. Now, I'm excited about it, but I want to tell you something. I'm a little intimidated here because my Spanish isn't very good. What if I show up and I and what, what do I do, Caleb? Uh, if you show up, well, first of all, register. And if you don't register before and you show up, we're going to ask you to register. But we just want you to be you. Most of these families that come, uh, they, they speak English. The kids speak English. Um, but we will have uh, some of our folks already who, who go to our uh, Sunday school, uh, Hispanic Sunday school that will be available in case you need quick translation or you want to learn a couple of words and be able to say uh, something. You can always say hola. Don't feel that that's going to be, you know, uh, uh, offensive or anything. Abs absolutely not. People feel so welcome. Even just you saying hello, saying hola, um, that, that it, it'll be fine. I encourage you to cast all that aside and just come and have fun and welcome these folks. Okay. Now, is this the kind of thing that the people of our church, uh, are, are we part of this? Are we hosting it? Or like the kids of our church, are they kind of responsible for hosting? Or is it just for them too? And they, there won't be any difference between the, the Hispanic and the Anglo and the black and the whatever else kids we've got. It is for them as well. So in the same, in the okay. same heart as the, the origins of this day, we want there to be no difference and just kids being kids and, re and recognizing that there's richness into the way that God created us in his image 
and in different colors and different languages. But we all want all our kids to be there and have the same amount of fun and, and make friends, make new friends. And they'll say, hey, come to church. Come come to church on Wednesdays. We have these these things that, that we, the, the, uh, GAs, RAs, Miss Melanie is going to be there, connect you know, with Miss Melanie, invite them to our church. We really want them to know that, that we want them with us, that we, that we want them to become part of the family of God. And so. I assume we're going to be promoting Vacation Bible School when they're here because we want those kids to come back again for Vacation Bible School, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. We, uh, we will have a way to, to register, but also we, we're sending them home with every kid that registered. We're sending them home with some candy and information for BBS because we want uh, maximum impact. We want them to come back. We want it to continue to uh, have a, a chance to share with them the gospel. And we all know BBS is amazing. Um, you know, being here, you and I got the opportunity to 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 uh, to be here last year, and just everything that Melanie does, it is so gospel oriented and centered. And I, we want all those kids in the community and the, uh, the that are joining us for the first time to to come and hear the gospel and be a part of BBS. Absolutely. And we also want them ultimately to become part of the family of God. We want yes. we want salvations. We want we yes. want to, to, hear, to see lives change. We also want them to be a part of our church, not just for special mm-hmm. events like Vacation Bible School and Dia del Nino, but also we want them to be a part of our church every week and Absolutely. be a part of our church family and grow together. And, and, and that's an exciting thing. You know, I'm reminded of uh, Acts chapter 2. I think it's verse 42 where he's describing the, the first church, the first century church. And, mm-hmm. and the, the, the statement that jumps out is he, he, he's talking about how there are people that they sold all their stuff and gave to others and they did all these things and they, they, they uh, proclaimed the word of God and they studied the word of God. But then he says that they had all things in common. Yes. And it always strikes me because, you know, we know people are different. And the fact mm-hmm. that some people had a lot to sell to give to others because some of didn't have anything, that means that there were different social economic structures and all these kinds of things. But, you know, when he said they have all things in common, Jesus is the thing that we all have Amen. in common. And, uh, and we are all sinners, and he is the salvation for all of us if we accept the gift of salvation. So help us spread that word, church family. Be here. Whether you have kids or grandkids or not, if you've got kids or grandkids, go get them and bring them. I'm bringing my grandkids, I hope, on yes. that day. They're coming from 100 miles away or however far they are. They're coming from 100 miles away to come be a part of this. And I hope you'll bring your kids, your grandkids, and be a part of this. But if you don't have any kids or grandkids, come. Come be a part. Come serve some food. Come help us do whatever. Just be a presence on our church campus. Now, one more time, Caleb, give us the date and the time and the location. It is April 30th, and we're going to start from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Okay. And so when you say food, are you talking about lunch? Are we going to have a meal or are we going to have snacks? Oh, yes. We're going to have a meal. All oh, right. Yes. <laughs> That's worth coming. I'm excited about that we'll already. Meal, snacks, all everything you can think of. <laughs> so well, come, well, come Pastor join us. Caleb, thank you so much for all you're doing. Thank and you. it was so good on Sunday uh, to see all those Hispanic folks in our service. And it was just great because we are seeing the evidence of the work that you're doing and the people in the Hispanic ministry. And it's great to see the, the Lord making our church mm-hmm. uh, look like our community. And it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. So thank you for all you're doing. God bless you. God bless you. Well, as we heard, this event is for all of us here at First Baptist, so looking forward to the 30th and being a part of that. It's going to be a great day. I wanted to also talk about the next day, which is May the 1st. It's just a couple of Sundays away, and we're having a Sunday evening service. Uh, it's a night of worship. We are ordaining deacons, and I'm so excited about this. We have several new deacons that um, have never been deacon before, and they're going to go through the process, and that night is going to be such a great worship um, experience as we, we pray over these men um, as they prepare to to lead and to to serve in our church. And so this is an exciting time where the church comes together and sets apart some men and say, we're praying for you as you serve serve the church and as you serve our community. So it's going to be really great. I know in a couple more Sundays, we've got another event coming up. Uh, Tell us about that, Tom. Well, we've got uh, May 15th, 
in our morning service, we're going to have a guest artist. Some, some people in these Texas will know this man, Karan Jackson. He's a longtime friend of mine. Uh, I've used him at ETBU uh, many years when I was there, but he's, he's not just an East Texas boy. He's known all across our country and has sung all over the world. An unbelievable testimony that he shares. Mm-hmm. He's not just a singer. He's a preacher, uh, but he won't be preaching, but, except maybe a little bit between songs. But, uh, but he'll, uh, he'll lead uh, a little bit in our morning worship service, but then that Sunday night, uh, our night of worship, he'll be. It'll be him, Karan Jackson, in concert, in worship leadership with us. And you, if you've not heard Karan Jackson, you've never heard a voice like that, and you've never heard someone speak uh, from the heart like he does. He's just a passionate, mm-hmm. passionate Christian man, and uh, and I love him. He's a brother, and oh my goodness, he he will move you in ways. It's just it's just incredibly powerful. So come see Karan Jackson and be a part of our night of worship on May 15th. So uh, then in June, something special is coming, Mark. Tell us well, about that. Well, if you were here Easter Sunday, you heard Melanie saying, we need workers for Vacation Bible School. This is such an incredible time in the life of our church. It is one of the largest outreach events that we have year year long. We, we hit more people that don't go to our church, don't go to a church, um, and they hear the gospel. And this is such a great opportunity for us to just be a light um, here in Nacogdoches. And so I just want to encourage you, whether you are really good with kids or you're not, there is a place for you. Um, we have all sorts of, of opportunities for you to serve, um, food, uh, security, um, teaching, uh, walking kids from class to class, um, recreation, crafts, so many places that you can be involved. So if you haven't already done that, please fill out um Fill out a volunteer form and turn it into Melanie. She needs your help. I uh, just want to encourage you in that. And you know, all of us, no matter where we are and how we're going to help during Vacation Bible School, it is not too early to pray. It's so important for us to pray and ask the Lord to bless this event and that people will um, accept Christ and will have life change, not only for our children, but wouldn't that be awesome if some parents, as kids came home with what they learned, um, helped their their parents learn more about who God was and we could see life change in a parent's life as well. So we need to be praying for this for for sure. Um, as we, we close out the, the pastor show, Tom, I know that you have some words of encouragement uh, that will give us some excitement and energy for the rest of the week. What, what do you have? I set you up well. You did well. That was good. So let me just tell you something that I was reading earlier, and it kind of encouraged me because of what happened last week. I was reading through a book uh, called Understanding and Preparing for Christian Worship, and Frank Segler wrote that text many years ago, and he he did a great job in in, uh, very significant ways. Uh, connecting what we do as as Christians during the week in terms of personal devotion, Bible reading, prayer, all those spiritual disciplines that we do during the week, and how that is important for us to feed the corporate worship mm-hmm. experience that we have on Sundays. And it really it works both ways because the corporate worship experience is designed then to feed that spiritual journey that we make throughout the week, and it just is this revolving cycle. But it occurred to me that, as you said, we had such a powerful experience on Sunday, not just because so many people were here or the the music was grand or the pastor was passionate, which he was on Sunday. It was a great day. Uh, But it it occurred to me that there was such a great spirit in the room, a great presence of the Lord there, just a powerful impact that, that we all felt because in part of the Bible reading, because that was that was part of how we all prepared as a congregation. We pre- prepared for worship through our daily spiritual journey. And, and I want to encourage everybody this week to continue that process. Find new ways to enhance uh, your spiritual journey, to to move forward in, in, in reading the Word of God every day and in, 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 in praying, spending time in the Word and in, in, in private conversation with the Lord mm-hmm. and just hear hear his voice and and uh, and just and just interact with the with the Lord in very significant ways. And you'll be amazed at what that does for all of us as that then begins to encourage others in our corporate worship gatherings, in our Bible study Sunday school classes, and that as we all take the spiritual growth process as as individuals, but also then as part of our faith family. So I hope Mm -hmm. today that that's a part of your life. I hope that it's something that 
a, a journey that you're on in a very active way and that you'll be an encouragement to someone else uh, this week as, uh, as, uh, as the Lord puts other people in your path to encourage you. So let us all do that work and be the hands and feet of Christ this week and do that. So how's that? Is that, is that an encouragement to you, Mark? Is that all right? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Well, thank you for joining me today, Mark. It's a great day. I love your brother, and I love my church, and I love everything about what the Lord is doing here. So thank you for all you do, and I hope that you have a good week, Mark, and I hope, church family, you all have a great week.